Welcome to ES310 Lesson 32. In this class so far, we have focused on two-dimensional kinematics and kinetic problems. Today we will be extending this into three dimensions, starting with kinematic problems. So we will, we will be looking at determining translational and rotational speeds and accelerations in three dimensions. More information about this topic can be found in Hibbler's Dynamics Textbook, Chapter 20, Sections 1 through 3. Let's go back and look at rigid body kinematics, since in three dimensions very very little actually changes. So we start with a situation where we have a fixed point. If we have a fixed point, and we can assume infinitesimal rotations, we can write our angular velocity as the time derivative of our angular position. And we can write our angular acceleration as the time derivative of our angular angular velocity. The velocity then for a fixed point is given by omega crossed with the radius from the fixed point to our point P. The acceleration is where we see our first change since we're dealing with three dimensions. The major point here is that omega and alpha are no longer constrained to the z-axis, which means that when we find the time derivative of omega, we have to incorporate both the time derivative of its magnitude as well as the time derivative of its direction. So instead of being able to write omega squared in this expression, we now have to write this as omega crossed with omega crossed with r. So we have a double cross product to deal with. And alpha, therefore, now includes the change in magnitude and direction of omega. In general planar motion, we have the same expression for our velocities. We have the velocity of point B is equal to the velocity of point A plus the relative velocity between point B and point A, which is given by omega crossed with the radius or position of B relative to A. The acceleration expression now incorporates the same double cross product as our acceleration so let's talk a little bit about how we can talk about acceleration in moving coordinate systems because setting up moving coordinate systems often simplifies these types of problems. So let's set up a, our problem with a stationary axis, which is the capital XYZ axis, and we have the small XYZ axis that is rotating relative to the stationary axis. The angular velocity of the xyz axis relative to the capital, the stationary axis, is equal to this capital Greek letter omega. Now let's take a general vector a, shown here pointing in an arbitrary direction. The time derivative of a can be written as the time derivative of a relative to the xyz axis plus omega, capital omega, which was the angular velocity of the little axis relative to the stationary axis, crossed with the vector a, where a is written in terms of the capital xyz axis. So in general then, if we're solving for alpha, we first need to solve for omega. So the omega is, this is the angular velocity of any entity in the system is equal to the angular velocity of that entity relative to the relative to the rotating system plus the angular velocity of the rotating system relative to the stationary system. Omega is an arbitrary general vector a, so if we apply the same definition to its time derivative, if we take the time derivative of omega in order to find alpha, we're going to take the time derivative of each sub vector in the sum. And each of those subvectors is also a general vector, a, so we're going to use this expression. So the time derivative of omega xyz is the time derivative of omega xyz plus omega crossed with omega xyz. The time derivative of the second part is the time derivative of capital omega relative to the xyz plus omega crossed with omega. Well, omega crossed with omega, anything crossed with itself is zero. And it may and the d time derivative of omega relative to the xyz axis there uh, is also zero. Omega is the rotation of the xyz axis. So relative to the xyz axis, there is no omega. That leaves us then with this first parenthesis as uh, the definition of 
our alpha for a situation where we have one axis rotating relative to a stationary axis. So let's take a, a look at a couple of examples of how this can be applied. So in this first example, we have a crane, and we're interested in point A at the tip of the crane. And this crane is doing two things. The first thing it's doing is it's rotating around the z-axis. So the whole crane is rotating uh, around the z-axis, and at the same time, the boom is being lowered with an omega-2. And so that's a rotation around the little y-axis. So we're going to say this, this little x, y, z axis is rotating with an omega-1 relative to a stationary axis that would be also fixed at point O. So that means that our capital omega, the, ro the angular velocity of the rotating axis, is going to equal omega-1, which is 0 0.15, and it's positive around the z axis, so k hat. Then the other omega, the omega of the x, y, z, so omega within the x, y, z axis is omega 2, which is 0 0.2, and that is in the positive j hat direction. They are both constant, so we know that omega, capital omega dot is equal to 0, and omega x, y, z dot is equal to 0. So now we can take a look at our, ex our equations from the previous page, and we have that our total omega is equal to the sum of the two omegas, and our al total alpha is equal to this expression right here. So our total omega is equal to omega capital plus omega xyz, which is equal to 0 0.2 j hat plus 0 0.15 k hat. Then we can write alpha is equal to omega x, y, z dot plus capital omega crossed with omega x, y, z. So omega x, y, z dot is zero, so this term is zero, which is equal to 0 0.15 k hat crossed with 0 0.2 j hat, so k crossed into j is negative i, and 0.2 times 0.15 gives us negative 0.03 i-hat. Now, that what they want to know, however, is the velocity and the acceleration. We have the angular velocity and the angular acceleration, so the velocity of point A around a fixed point is going to equal omega crossed with r from of point A relative to the fixed point. So these are now vectors that have multiple components, so it's easiest to write these cross products like this. And so we have omega, which is 0 in the i hat, 0 0.2 in the j hat, 0 0.15 in the k, k hat, and RAO is 50 feet in the z hat, and some amount in the j, in the i hat and zero in the j hat. So now we need to figure out how much in the i hat. Well, here's our triangle. Tell us this is 50 and this is 110. So this is x. We have then 110 squared is equal to 50 squared plus x squared, which is this Pythagorean theorem. And we can write that x is equal to about 98. So this is 98 in the x direction. We can do this product. So we've got i hat times 0.2 times 50 minus 0.15 times 0. So 0.2 times 50 plus j hat, which is 0.15 times 9.8, or 98, minus 0 times 50 plus k hat, which is 0 times 0 minus 0 0.2 times 98. So minus 0 0.2 times 98. Writing this out then, we get that the velocity is 10 i hat plus 14.7 j hat minus 19.6 k hat.
Now we can write the acceleration of point A, and the acceleration of point A is equal to, if we go back up here, we are right using this expression right here. So the acceleration is equal to then alpha crossed with r minus omega crossed with omega crossed with r. All right, so the acceleration of a is equal to the acceleration of the fixed point, which is 0, plus alpha crossed with r of a relative to the fixed point, plus omega crossed with omega crossed with r a o. If we write this out, then alpha crossed with r a o, we get i hat j hat k hat alpha is just negative 0.03 i hat, 0, 0. And r is the same as here, so 98, 0, 50. Plus omega crossed with omega crossed with r. Well, omega crossed with r we've already found. That's this expression, va. So we get omega, which is 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.15 crossed with this VA, which is 10, 14.7, negative 19.6, J hat, K hat, and we can take both of those cross products, and our final answer should be negative 6.125 I hat plus 3J hat minus 2 K hat. In our next example, we have a similar situation where we have a rotating uh, reference frame. The rotating reference frame is, has the point here, and Z it corresponds to the still, the stationary reference frame. And J is shown, X is pointing out of the board at us at this situation. And so what we have is we have a gear A, and we know that the gear A is spinning with an omega of 10 around the z-axis. Gear A is meshed with gear B, and so this point here, which I'm going to call point P, is going to be at the same velocity from both directions. Then gear B is being driven by this motor at 30 radians per second. And the motor is sitting on a turntable that can also rotate. But we don't know, the turntable is not fixed to gear A. So we don't know the omega that the turntable turns at, but we do know it's in the z direction. So in our case then, this capital omega, which is the rotation of the moving axis relative to the stationary axis, we don't know. But we know it's in the omega z, in the z direction, so let's call it omega z, and we'll put it in the k hat direction. All right. Then we also have omega of the x, y, z plane. That we do know because we're told that the x, y, z axis here is going to be spinning around the y direction with 30. And that's a positive. So 30 j hat is our omega in the x, y, z. So that's the that's how fa that's the angular m the velocity of our system relative to the rotating system okay uh, both of this one is constant so we know that omega x y z dot is equal to 30 no is equal to 0 and we need to figure out what this omega z is so we can write a velocity P of point P from the point of view of gear A. Well, gear A is fixed at its center, so we just get omega of gear A crossed with R of P as measured from the center of the stationary center. So that is our 10 k hat crossed with 0.3. That would be in the j hat direction. So that gives us negative 3 i hat. All right. The velocity of p can also be written from the point of view of gear b, right? So gear b has 
Gear B also has a stationary point related to it, which is this point back here, all right, the origin of the spinning coordinate system. So gear, so gear B then is moving with an omega re relative to that point. This is our total omega, which is going to incorporate both omega Z and omega X, Y, Z crossed with R from that station of point P from that stationary point. We need to give it a, um, let's call it um, S. All right, so what is omega? Omega is our total omega, which is equal to capital omega plus omega of X, Y, Z, which is omega Z K hat plus 30 J hat crossed into R, and R is this distance right here. So RPS is equal to, we're going to move 0.3 in the J hat direction and 0.15 in the K hat direction. Okay, so now we can take that cross product, I hat, J hat, K hat, Omega is going to be 0, 30 omega z, and r is 0, 0.3, negative 0.15. And so so we can write this out then as i hat is. 30 times negative 0.15 minus 0.3 omega z. J hat is 0, k hat is 0. So this is equal to the vp from above, which is negative 3 i hat. And so we can solve for omega z, because we have i hat equal to i hat. Everything else is known, so omega z turns out to be negative 5. And it's in the k hat direction. Now we can go back and write out omega, the vector, is equal to negative 5 k hat plus 30 j hat. That's the first part of our answer. And we need to find alpha, right, the angular velocity and acceleration. So alpha based on our expression, is equal to omega x, y, z plus big omega crossed with omega x, y, z. So this is zero because that was a constant. Oh, big omega is our negative 5 k hat. So negative 5 k hat crossed with omega x, y, z is 30 j hat. So we get alpha equal to a negative k crossed into a positive j is a positive i and 5 times 30 is 150 i hat and that then is the answer for alpha